Hey amigos, I hope I haven't had you waiting too long, but I've been so busy in the garage. Um, it seems like every motorcycle I look at seems to, well not seems, but needs something done to it. Especially this shovel head right here. Seems like shovel heads like to be on the rack a lot. Um, this motorcycle has been occupying this floor jack the most, more than any other motorcycle I've ever had. But right now, there's really nothing wrong with it. Well, I don't know. It might be sick, because check it out. Last time I worked on it, it decided not to leak oil anymore. So I think there might be something up with this motorcycle. Yeah, it's got oil in it. it may, I don't know. Maybe it's just, uh, it is what it is. But I got it up on the rack because I have a little bit of a clutch handle issue. Right now, this feels pretty good. But down here where the cable adjustment is, this part screws into a tab that's part of the frame. And the tab is threaded out. I mean, it's lost its threads. So, in other words, it's stripped. So, it tends to work itself loose, and then I end up with a lot of slack in my clutch handle. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this out and take this nut off right here. And go down to the local hardware store and get me a nut with that kind of thread pitch, but it'd be a lock nut. I sure do want to get it to a point where one day uh, I can take some kind of a trip on it. Like, I need to do that like I need a hole in my head. <laughs> Or then again, being that a certain somebody that we all know has already done that on a shovel, it kind of stole my idea. Well, he didn't really steal it. I never told it to nobody. But, okay, so I won't be original. So I guess maybe I'll have to do something really stupid and ride that on a trip. You know, the iron head. Oh, and by the way, check it out. It's got that 1976 Harley Davidson AMF logo. I think it's the correct, uh, you know, design for that year of motor. It's a 76 motor. Why not a 76 paint job? I mean, I don't know anybody else running around on a 1976 Ironhead Sportster that looks like this. Why not go ahead and put the stock logo on it? <laughs> so anyway, there's that. And I think I pretty much got it tuned how it needs to be tuned. I know I really bragged and bragged about points going into the shovel head. Well, may I say I went ahead and put the electronic ignition back in it because I realized that there was nothing wrong with that electronic ignition. I was so quick to blame that electronic ignition as to why I broke down on the side of the highway. Well, in the middle of the highway. I'm pretty sure that electronic ignition that's in there, that single fire ultimate ignition, that's the only culprit I can think of as to why the darn thing quit on me. And what really happened as I found out later on after putting points in this thing, the same thing happened to me again as I was riding down the road after I got done filming the last video. And what happened? I ran out of gas. So, <laughs> and why do I say that? I put this thing in reserve and it got me home and then I looked in the gas tank and I had like a half, of, a less than a half an inch or maybe a half an inch of fuel left in the tank. Then I remembered I did not put any gas in the motorcycle since I broke down or broke down, you know. Anyway, but why didn't I just continue with the points though? Well, I did notice that apparently there is a lack of horsepower with the points. I mean, a significant lack of horsepower. I mean, I think my truck, you know, out there has got better horsepower than this thing when it had points in it. And it finally dawned on me why Harley Davidson went to electronic ignition in 1978 with the shovel head. Because when the shovel head went to 80 inches, which is when the 80 inch came out. Um, well, think about it. Bigger engine displacement, more compression, more fuel, hotter spark. And you're not going to get as hot of a spark with a set of points, apparently, because I actually tested out what my spark looked like with the points with the Kickstarter and I wasn't too impressed and then I tried it out with the electronic ignition and it had a much hotter spark to it. So with it on my conscience knowing there was nothing wrong with that electronic ignition, I went ahead and put that electronic ignition back in there and I can't seem to figure out the kicker combo. Then again, maybe I'll just try another electronic ignition. Who knows, but it really kind of bummed me out that the points didn't work. Well, they did work, but they didn't work like I wanted them to. But hey, you know, there is some credit to it you know bigger engine displacement needs a hotter spark but yeah <clears throat> until then i don't know what's next okay amigos maybe this is what's next i'm just arbitrarily making footage because i really don't know what to make of this video but i'm sure it'll come out in the wash but i'm at work and about to get off work and wait for the bell to ring to say go ahead and clock out but anyway and close that door and whatever else is going to happen so um <laughs> this is really kind of funny i never made a video at work before well yeah i have but anyway we'll see what happens next
and it's time to go. Now that I'm off the clock, I don't know what the heck I'm gonna do when I get home. Um, I know it has been about three weeks since I've made a video, sorry about that, but anyway, I got a few things I could be, could be doing, like maybe adjust the clutch on the shovel head, or replace the broken clutch cable on the soft tail, or perhaps maybe, I don't know, mess with the iron head, I don't know, we'll see what happens when we get there. These guys are looking at me funny because I'm talking to myself. <laughs> That's pretty funny, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I rode the shovel head today. It runs pretty good. The clutch, like I said, needs to be adjusted. But one of the things that happened to this bike ever since that time when the starter was disengaged, it did quite a number on my ring gear, on my clutch hub. So sometimes the jack shaft or the pinion gear wants to, uh, you know, slip out of gear. It might do it right now, but I'm not sure. So we'll see what happens. It sounds a little like this sometimes. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, sometimes it sounds like that. <laughs> Okay, buenos dias, it is the next day. I think what I'm gonna do, I am going to try to get this thing safer to ride because, well, you may not be able to tell, but these have the three degree raked uh, bearing cups that are on here. That's actually what came originally with this motorcycle. Well, not originally, but when I got it, it had these. But whoever had installed that didn't take into account that you need a longer steering stem. So when I put this together, I noticed that there wasn't enough shaft to come up through here. So um, I can literally take this front end, put both hands on that front wheel and move the front end up and down in the neck. So that's probably why this thing handles funny, like why the front end feels very heavy and kind of sketchy. But now I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. I got some new bearing cups with some new neck bearings that's supposed to be the stock type scenario for this era of Sportster. I'm going to replace those with these. I got a bottom and a top. Okay, I got the forks off and this is what I'm talking about. There's a pinch bolt right here and it's supposed to pinch the this part of the triple tree onto the rest of the shaft that comes up and there's just not enough shaft that came up because like I said the shaft's too short for these cups and as you can see see that that's what I'm talking about so uh, I'm gonna get further with this um, get the trees off and you'll even get a better look okay this is what I mean and this is barely holding on so I'm gonna shoot this part real quick before everything collapses that's what I'm talking about that's as far as that shaft comes up the shafts too short for those bearing cups so I'm gonna get all of this apart and try to get the new ones in and you know you get the picture well i had to just stop filming because i needed both hands and concentration on uh, you know getting this front end together because apparently these old front ends are not exactly uh like the newer ones where you just kind of slap them together so there is a science behind getting the fall away right on this and i guess it's probably the same well no it wasn't like that on the shovel head I don't know, this thing's just weird. But as far as how it handles, it feels a little more solid. I guess these handlebars kind of make it feel a little bit on the uh, heavy side or whatever, because I don't have a whole lot of leverage with these rabbit ear bars. I'm going to attempt to, well, how do you like that? Okay. Okay, I guess I just did an old bike thing or something. And I'm pretty sure that this light does not know that there's a motorcycle here, especially something of this size. Yeah, because the light just turned green. For those guys, that is. Maybe if I move forward, this guy can move up and he can trip the light. We're fixing to move now. So anyway, like I said, I'm going to attempt to ride this thing across town, that is, across two towns. Uh, this will be the furthest I've ever taken this thing. So, I have no mirrors, I have no turn signals, I have a left hand brake, right hand shift, 
I'm sure I got, I'm sure I got a lot to get used to. Let's see if it makes it because this is the first time I've taken it, well, tried to take it any further than going to work or going to scooters. So we'll see what happens. Well, I made it across Gulfport and then Biloxi, at least Biloxi city limits, a little area called Wool Market. I guess I'm halfway there or something. I don't know. I got a chaperone up ahead, keeping me from going any faster than I need. So I guess that's a good thing. And I got to thinking, why would I want to see how far this thing will go, if it will make it, and attempt it during the heat of the day? Looks like the roads are wet too. And I'm either chasing the storm or maybe I'm about to go into one. I don't know. One thing that these old bikes don't like is wet weather because you might as well have no brakes. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it to wherever Little Joe is. Did I say I was gonna go see Little Joe by the way? Yeah. He got a new motorcycle, or a new to him motorcycle, and it is an 09 Softail Springer, and it actually got bequeathed to him by a patron at the bar that he owns. Hopefully that I can get there and we can show you Joe's new barn find. For some of you guys who have been around for a while, are familiar with Joe's Super Glide and the scenario with that. In fact, maybe I'll leave that link right there. Well, we hit a little bit more water on the road and maybe this chaperone is out here to keep me from getting any more wet than what I am because as further as I go east, the darker the clouds look. As you can tell, there's rain on my camera lens. Oh shoot, it's raining now. Oh no, it's not. That's my front wheel throwing water on me because <laughs> I have no front fender. Ah, uh, shoot. Old bike stuff. Uh, there we go. Another old bike thing. Oh boy. Do I really want to try to attempt a road trip on this? Being a shade tree surgeon has already stolen my idea. Actually, he didn't steal it. I suggested it to him back in November, but I don't know if that's why he did it. But uh, <laughs> about riding a shovel head from one corner of the country to the other. I was actually wanting to do that myself with my shovel head. But now I'm pretty sure that if I go ahead and try that, um, I'm gonna get some comments. Oh, you're just trying to copy Shade Tree Surgeon. Okay, fine. Maybe I'll do it anyway, but that won't be what the video is about. Maybe I'll do it on an Ironhead Sportster. I might be asking for trouble though, too, when I do that. All right, I went around that van. I couldn't take it no more. Uh, maybe I'm probably asking for trouble with this weather up here, but it looks like I'm headed straight for it, but there's an end at this road up here. If I go that way, I will probably miss it. Maybe it'll go that way while I'm going that way. Maybe it's not that way. I don't know. So far the bike made it this far. Okay, the road just got a little drier and the clouds got a little closer and darker. And at this red light up here, I'm going that way again. And it looks like it may be optimistic. I may not get hit with some hard weather. Now let's see if we can make it all the way to Biloxi. Actually, I am in Biloxi or Yaberville or wherever the heck I'm at, I don't know whatever this city limit is that I'm in. Oh shoot, four lane highway. Will this thing maintain a four lane highway speed or just get run over instead? <laughs> okay, I'm going as fast as this guy. Maybe I'm doing 55 or 60. Oh look, there's something I never thought I'd see on this motorcycle is the back way of Biloxi. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh shoot, and it looks like it's raining pretty hard over at my house. Maybe I can sneak around to back to the house the back way, if there is a back way. Oh well. And anyway, I am about on the other side of the back way. And it looks like <laughs> I'm going to make it. At least I made it here, almost. I'm almost there, yeah. <laughs> I still got to go home though. That might be a different story. Almost there. I tell you what, this feels like an accomplishment. I really, really was really nervous about doing this. I know it's not like I'm going like I don't know 500 miles in one shot or I'm just going across town going across two different towns I mean it's not like I'm going to the stop sign and back by my house or to work I wonder if Joe's here I might have beat him here and I don't know what he drives anymore but this is the place oh there's the bike though Ooh, that looks pretty nice Hey man! 
What's up? Hey, check it out. I made it. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> That is so cool, nigga. Be careful. It reminds me so much of my first motorcycle. Yeah. Enough too. Uh, I, I'm just a glutton for punishment to see if this thing will make it across two towns. <laughs> uh, so far, I made it to my stop sign and back, or I even rode it to work, which ain't but five miles. But anyway, it looks like it can make it all the way to Biloxi too. Okay, this uh, bucket of bolts right here actually made it here, so that's pretty cool and. I think I see something dripping now? Yes, you must. It's an Oh man, I was so happy that it wasn't leaking yet, but now it is. Now, it looks like my front brake is leaking too. Shoot. <laughs> like I said, getting here is only half the battle. I still got to get home. And there's a really nasty storm brewing up. But anyway, enough about that. Here's Joe's new motorcycle, or new to him motorcycle that I was just talking about. So, uh, what do you got, man? What do you. Is it a 09, 010, something like 08. that? Oh, 08, okay. Yeah, 08 Crossbones. A friend of mine passed away, and he wanted me to have it. I still had to pay a little bit of money for it, but it's a cool bike. I don't like soft tails, and I don't like springers, and now I got both. <laughs> well, it's kind of an interesting story, because that's exactly how I got this thing right here. That belonged to a good friend of mine named Paul, or Yukon. That's what they used to call him. But I'll tell you guys that story later. It's the cool thing about this bike is... Uh, this is my brother Kurt. We've been best buds for 20 some years, and he's got a really cool uh, Dyna Wide Glide, uh, one of the special edition jobs, FXDG3 or whatever. But you know, it gets a little rough because it's a little hot rod Dyna, and my Dyna's a little rough. And he's been in a couple of accidents, and I've been in a couple of accidents. So, this is the perfect uh, little get on the road and ride tool that'll be more comfortable than the little hot rotted dinas that we got i see the shade tree surgeon you can ride this four thousand miles with no tools i'm pretty sure <laughs> pretty sure bud with that shovel head love the video pal i got all the duct tape you need you just let me know and remember when they say adjust the valves every 500 miles adjust the valves every 500 miles so, <laughs> yeah unless it's got like I don't know. I don't know all shovel heads, but yeah. Braver man than I. We're looking forward to the next video, the sequel to what's happening next. But uh, Great video. Great yeah. video. Glad to see you made it home in one piece, too. Yeah, that's so great. I was, I, just telling so the, I, I was just telling the audience that he stole my idea, but he didn't really steal it. I don't know if he remembers me telling him to do that after he rode a Honda Silverwing from Los Angeles all the way to Tampa without even checking the oil, without the proper gear. And he admitted later on that was a pretty stupid idea. So I suggested to him, here's a dumb idea. Why don't you buy a shovel head or an iron head in Washington or Oregon State and ride it back to Tampa? Didn't that. know you was really going to do that, man. You <laughs> can't do that with a shovel head, bro. Yeah. I'm, but I'm glad you made it home because I would have had like survivor's guilt if you didn't. You know? Oh, it's great. <laughs> it, that, that is so hilarious. I love it. Keep them coming. Maybe you can get an iron head and ride it back from Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Don't do it. Yeah. What? <laughs>
on this thing. Nothing really to brag about. But to me, that's something. Considering that it's been, you know, with me since 2017, a non-running motor. And, you know, even though I took it out of a, the original frame, put it in a hardtail frame. But anyway, isn't it a beauty? I mean, I really dig it, and uh, it's really fun for me whenever I build a bike. Or I really don't do it on a regular basis, but whenever these projects fall into my lap, I never really have a really big, grand idea of how it's going to turn out in the end. But it's just, you know, I'm happy how it came out. It's a cool little, fun little motorcycle. And, uh, oh yeah, by the way, I guess, like any old iron head, I guess it's going to leave its mark. Nowhere is it coming from the top end. It's just that I guess that air breather, not the air breather, but the crankcase breather. There's a piece of tubing, like all old iron heads, it runs from here and just stops back here somewhere. And the opening is in the atmosphere. So with the high RPMs, a constant high RPM on this bike, you know, right around 60, 65, I'm gonna get some oil on the bottom of the motorcycle just from that breather. But it is what it is. But I can dig it. But anyway, I guess this will be the end of this video, whatever the heck it was supposed to be about. Mainly, I just wanted to say hello and I hope you guys are doing all right. So anyway, as always, you guys keep the rubber side down and do be good to yourselves. Thanks a lot.